I got a question from a customer about how to terminate threads so I decided to make this quick video. Now I'm going to show two different ways how to do it. Basically most people are used to making threads using the helix and creating a sweep. Even for SOLIDWORKS 2016 we have the thread wizard but the thread wizard also doesn't terminate the ends of threads so you can have something where you grab this edge for example, choose extruded thread and create a thread and then if you look at the ends it's basically the same thing that you'd create if you were creating this with a helix and a profile. No end here. So I'm going to show two different ways to do this. One is a loft or boundary feature and the other one's just a simple revolve and this is generally or this one looks very similar to a lot of things you'll see on plastic parts or glass jars or something like that. And the other one is more akin to what you'd see on a screw or something like that. I know this isn't the exact geometry you'd see necessarily, but this is a lot closer to that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete a bunch of the things I have here and start from just my simple cylinder. So I'm going to assume most people know how to use the helix tool here. Now if I create a sketch on this face, for example, I'm going to have a helix going from this edge. And generally when I create a thread, I center the thread profile. So if I did this, for example, I'd have a thread sticking out on this side or above the cylinder. Similarly, if I just offset by half of the distance for my thread, I'm probably going to use a thread of maybe about 0.1 or 0.2 inches. If I only do half of that, then the end of the thread, just like the one created by the thread wizard, is going to sit right at that top edge. And then when we terminate or finish our thread, it's going to be above that area. So whatever offset you choose to create your helix on, just make sure it leaves you enough space to add a little bit more geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and just create an offset here and I'm cheating a little bit because I've done this before so I've set an offset distance of 0 0.07 inches and then I'm gonna do the good old sketch convert entities and jump right into the helix tool so for this I'm not quite sure why but by default SOLIDWORKS so start angle is 225 degrees Maybe there's some good reason for this. I typically like to be able to use the default planes, so I'll go with 0, 90, 180, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse this direction, and I'm going to keep this pitch of 0.2. And I think by default this is on clockwise, so I'm going to go ahead and create a clockwise thread. And I'll just go to something like four revolutions. Doesn't matter too much here. and then I'm going to go ahead and draw up my profile for the thread on the right plane. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create another helix and this is going to be for that boundary feature that we create and it's just going to extend pass on this side. Now you'll notice at the beginning I showed a revolved profile down here and the boundary profile up here. If you do create another boundary profile down here, you'll have to create another plane down there. So I chose this one just to make this a little bit easier or to remove out one step. So once again, I'm going to convert this out and I'll create a helix and then we'll turn off that reverse direction and I'm going to go ahead and hit counterclockwise so this goes along with the profile. Now if we turn this down something like a quarter of a revolution is still going to be quite large here so I can drop this down maybe 0.1 um, in this case maybe I'll just go with that same 0 0.07 or 0 0.06 something like that I don't remember exactly what I did but we can modify it after the fact here so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the right plane I'll hide this one out and then we can create our sketch on the right plane. Now I typically like to have some overhang on the profile in case you get a zero thickness issue or in case you have some kind of taper but generally you won't run into issues if you just put it coincident to this edge. I just like to do it this way 
just in case I change my geometry and all of a sudden I have two solid bodies because this was coincident before and then I changed some maybe change the diameter here and have some issue I don't know it has been useful in the past so I keep doing it so I'm gonna go ahead and add a midpoint to the center line and then grab the helix somewhere up in this area and pierce it if you are not aware if you click on other parts of the helix or other revolutions of the helix then it'll pierce that area on the helix so if I'm clicking up here it's gonna be up here if I'm clicking on the second area down here it's going to sit down there so I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a triangle out here and then I'll draw out a back area as well and then I'll just give this some kind of width a lot of times you'll put this on maybe a plastic bottle or something so there'll be a width or, or maybe a jar so we'll just leave a very small thickness there and then I'm going to go ahead and make these two equal or rather make these three equal and then I can add a few dimensions this is going to be let's say 0.1 inches and then I'm gonna go ahead and just add a fillet on the front here and this is gonna be 0 0.01 inches now if you notice my geometry did change a little bit my equal relations stayed uh, this doesn't really have to do with creating the end threads here so I'm not really gonna worry about it but if you were doing this on your own and you had these equal relations the equal relations were retained so this triangular area actually became bigger when we added the fillet just a little note in case you're doing this at home and wondering why your thread just got bigger so I'll go ahead and just choose out my profile and that helix and then the option for merge result is generally already checked so I'll go ahead and leave that and so now we have that thread but as usual we have a flat thread from creating that so on this side we're going to do a very simple operation we're going to create a sketch convert this out and I like to just do a revolve and choose this line out we want to make sure and I was just using the internal line as the axis of revolution that's why this method is generally very quick because we already have everything in that converted entity so typically for really thin objects, I've generally gone with 110 degrees and that tends to work. If you have something really, really thin, you might have to take a little bit off. But the 110 degrees ensures that we are fully contacting this side of this face and so that we're not going to have some faces or edges just hanging off of this. So I'm going to leave that merge result on, just click OK, and very quickly I have that end of that thread. So that's one way to create it very quickly if you want something with more taper in it you can create a boundary feature and once again for this I have that helix or extra helix that I created on the other side and we're gonna do a loft or boundary feature to a point so I'm gonna create a 3d sketch grab the point tool and just snap this on the helix now we could define this by dimensions there's no way or no good way that I've thought of to just snap this to the helix SolidWorks doesn't really give you that option we could add dimensions or we could add a plane here to put the point on the plane but I just I'm fine with just dragging this out and leaving it there one of the downsides is when you do move this around the point moves a little bit so you have to reset the point every time if you're updating those dimensions so now we can go ahead and create the boundary for this and I actually did just create the boundary which I edited out I was having some issues creating the boundary with the helix being 0 0.07 revolutions so change this to 0 0.1 revolutions let's see if that works the boundary feature should usually work in this case I think the problem I was running into might be a bug with SOLIDWORKS 2016 so I will go ahead and try this out here and see if this all works so we can go ahead and choose for direction 1 the face and the point and if you leave it at this you get a very weird kind of curved profile because a lot of this profile is sitting on the inside of the cylinder it's merged on the inside there 
So we can go ahead and for that direction too, we're just going to choose the helix and click OK. And for some cases and some geometry, you might run into this feature failing. Um, so just mess around with the size of the helix a little bit and the position of the point to see if that affects things. Or you can also use the loft tool. In this case, we could use the loft and choose these two profiles. And then here, instead of guide curves, we choose centerline parameters and choose out this and click OK and you should get roughly the same profile. I did run to a bit of an issue where the profile of the loft didn't fully merge with this side. There were some gaps for the 0 .07 turn helix, so that's one thing that you might have to edit or work with. That's one reason why the Revolve is just a lot easier to work with, but which one of these you choose is just based on what kind of thread completion you want there. But this is two ways to finish your thread. One very quick and the other you know not too bad but takes a little bit longer and is a little bit more finicky to work with. Now the last thing I didn't mention here was if we do want a slightly different profile let's say we want this to be a little bit more curved we can always add guide curves and you just do that by using a spline on surface here or that would be generally the easiest way because it would stick to the cylinder. 